Hi everybody, welcome back to Caesars Forum. You're watching theCUBE's day one coverage of Snowflake Summit 2023. We're going to get right into it because we're tight on time. Tony Baer is here, he's the founder and CEO of DB Insight. He actually has more than one insight, but he's... <laughs> <laughs> and Doug Hetchin is the Vice President and Principal Analyst at Constellation Research and Sanjeev Mohan, Principal at Sanjmo. Guys, great to see you, we've, we've done this before. Let's get right into it. Tony, what did you learn yesterday that you can talk about that's not NDA. What were your big takeaways? Well, I think it was pretty, you know, pretty, you know when, uh, when the Christian you know, you know, finished the keynote this morning, it's container services. That kind of blows the lid off of snow, Snowflake processing. It basically addresses all the, lim all the limitations that you know, data scientists you know, were complaining about, which is that you know, they don't want to work through UDFs, they want to execute directly on the data. And with, you know, with, and with you know, container services, you can do exactly that. A anything you'd add, your big takeaway, Doug? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, Snowflake. Park Container Services is the linchpin of almost all the announcements here. The ML, ability to run ML, the ability to run the native apps, uh, APIs, et cetera. Uh, interesting that, yeah, one of the big uh, uh, organic applauses uh, was on developer capabilities. A new command line interface, <coughs> logging and tracking, auto sync to Git repositories. Right, it was like, oh wow, how boring, yeah. but people were excited. <laughs> That's, you know, <laughs> it's the simple yeah. stuff yeah. that appeals to developers. If you're going to be a platform for apps, you have to appeal to the, the app developers to it, make their life And you would agree, easy. container services were, yeah. I, mean, I think they're even containerizing the GPUs with NVIDIA. Yeah, exactly, yes. so I, oh, yeah. I thought container services would be my number one choice of the new uh, announcement. And interestingly, what it does is LLMs, which are of course the big thing these days, so now there are four different ways of accessing LLMs. You can containerize it, uh, an open source, you can use Streamlit, you have native LLMs like uh, Document AI, and you can call LLM through an API like OpenAI. Mm -hmm. So this is how, ex how the platform is, is expanding. So the high level messaging, all data, all workloads. Okay, I get that. What, what doesn't I think it's, it's there, but I want your guys' opinion. They got a unified data platform, they got a lot of different ways to query now, and, and they can store and manage different data types. So there's like this magic integration. Did, is, it, am I getting that right? Is that coming across in the messaging for these guys that, that I, can, I can query different data types and have it return a kind of consistent, or is that like I'll put dream. it this way, I think we also have to put this in the context also of the lake house. And while it doesn't get all the decibels and the spotlight uh, you know, that LLMs do, the fact is that you want, to be, you want to take the lid off of whatever data, and part of it is all the unstructured data, but also all the data that was in the data lake, and with the lake house, basically you get trusted data, and Snowflake is basically, is essentially, you know, making Iceberg a first class citizen. That's, you know, you know, that's, you know, that's pretty profound. It's all data and it's all workloads. I think that's the big take with the containers. Actually, all workloads. It's all data and all code. Yes, that's yes, That's what yes. it is. In fact, what, uh, uh, it's a brilliant strategy because what Snowflake has come to a con uh, conclusion is we own the data, we should now own all the apps. And, uh, and there, an underlying theme of this entire conference is security and governance. If you run things within our platform, no data movement, secure, governed, shared, and scalable. So you guys are on your way to San Francisco to the Databricks event. So you got Databricks is really, I, I see it, tell me if you guys see it differently, as a data engineering and a data pipeline company. Snowflake's a data management company. They're each trying to go in that other direction. Um, is that how you see it? And no question about that. I mean, the thing is, you got to look where their natural constituencies were when they, where they got started. Databricks was always the company of data engineers and data scientists, and you know, Snowflake was, originally came as the data warehouse. I mean, even, they even admitted that this morning. They even said those words, obviously. So basically, I think through container services, they're really trying to make a very major play for the constituency that felt that going through UDFs and store procedures was just not going to be oh, adequate. Yeah, I, thought, I thought data warehouse was like uh, multi-cloud at Amazon at this conference, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, despite uh, their efforts to encroach on each other's turf, uh, their strengths are still in their their base, uh, but they're steadily pushing outside. I think uh, yeah. Databricks' move to acquire uh, Mosaic ML was a good move to, to shore up the data science and make sure they're not uh, they're still leading on AI and this uh, generative capabilities. Uh, you know, they spent the last few years really talking mainly about building out the house capabilities of their lake house. Uh, but they got to protect their flank and their data science uh, supremacy. I was think, that was yeah. that move by Databricks a Neva FOMO in your opinion? Uh, 
I don't know if they knew about the Neva FOMO uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. announcement at that point. Uh, I think they're just pursuing what works for them. I mean, uh, Mosaic is there in San Francisco. I think it's an aqua hire in many ways. This talent is scarce, yeah, and yeah. Uh, they're bringing them into the fold. I find container services is a game changer. That moves them away from data warehouse. Right. Like for example, one example they showed us was Pinecone. Pinecone is a full-fledged vector database that runs on its own. But now you can run the entire Pinecone as a container yes. inside a Snowflake. So, so I, I don't see them as a data warehouse company anymore. Well, no. I think they've really blown apart. Well, they so being a data warehouse company years ago. So you got vector. Yeah. With, with, with the Python, native. you got, now you have a, a graph database with yeah. relational AI, even Correct. though it's kind of a hybrid, Correct. so you have all these yeah. different data types, pluggable storage, essentially. Right, a, and Correct. Th th how unique is that? I, I think that is quite unique. But, uh, in fact, I would say uh, Snowflake is going down exactly the same path AWS has gone down, which is there are many different ways of doing it. We will give you native, uh, capabilities, so with Document AI, they now have a native vector database themselves. Yeah, but you can't integrate them on AWS. That's the difference, yeah. that's the magic secret sauce of Snowflake, right. isn't it? Correct, yeah. yes. Huge difference. That's powerful. Yeah, in fact, very powerful. George was just saying, Werner Vogels was saying, wait, it's your fault to the customers two, two years ago at reInvent, yeah. you guys asked for all this stuff, but right. they just threw out Correct. primitives. Right. Snowflake's yeah. done the work, it sounds like, yes. to do the integration. Is that true, though? Have they really done that? I mean, we're hearing a lot of pre, we're yeah. here in Iceberg, we're hearing, what, we didn't hear much so, about so Unistore. Me, yeah, yeah Unistore we, got, we got to remember that yeah, yeah. Container yeah. Services uh, is you know, private preview Pre at this preview. point. Last <laughs> year we heard about Unistore. I'm surprised they mentioned it. It didn't come up very much yesterday. Uh, but we got to make sure that we don't think of you know, these container services, the latest shiny thing, but, uh, but that makes it all available. Yeah. They have simplified. For example, you know, the container services, underneath the surface is Kubernetes, right. but it's not exposed. They've taken all exactly. the complexity well, that's away. That's what they're saying is basically you know, you hide the code and, and, and both of you know, for simplicity's sake, but also to protect IP of all the creators. But, so who, well, and then it's also something that they sell. They're selling the compute, they're selling yeah, the orchestration, exactly. they're selling the, the storage. Uh, it's something that is Snowflake product. Which is very same different with the AWS. Same, if I understand and it, GPU. same with GPU. Yes. It's yeah. like Amazon's going to get paid. We'll give you this but option. But I'm not going to spin up a, 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 a GPU a EC2 instance from NVIDIA, for, 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 from NVIDIA, I'm going to buy Snowflake, So right? Snowflake and Container Service is like EKS, yes. but the choices of compute and storage are things that Snowflake will provide. It's not like on a cloud where you have lots of choices. I want to ask you guys the, the supply chain example. You use Blue Yonder and where that fits in container services, because you know, Blue Yonder is Duncan Angove's latest heavy lift. You guys know, know those guys. Is it, that's the manugistics, at least part, in part the manugistics. They got all these <laughs> legacy apps, so you're going to containerize them, yeah. put them in and modernize them? Is that, is that a viable play? Well, put it this way. I think. I mean, look. It's also the, it's the same story you hear, like with you know, with anyone. You know, actually, it's surprising coming from Snowflake because that's the type of message you tend to hear more, like from the IBMs and the Oracles in the world, and the Teradata. It's just that we have all these landed investments, and what Snowflake is saying is, we'll take those landed investments, and if you can, you know, put it in a container, you know, have it run in our environment, you know, have it run, you know, under our security and, and all the wonderful stuff against our data. You know, I mean, Snowflake basically at the end of the day, you know, basically cries all the way to the bank. Yes. But I could do that in the cloud. Yeah. But the, to me, the difference is that you're you're actually they're actually re-architecting around Snowflake and relational AI to actually truly try to solve the supply chain problem. But I, I don't know enough to. It's know Blue to Yonder's will. app. It's it's yeah. going to be a Blue Yonder native app. And there's you know, Snowflake is saying we're providing all this infrastructure. And we're inviting and, in yeah. the native apps, and that's another important topic here today, the native apps. Right. They now introduced last year, now they have 25 companies that have built 40 native apps that are in production. Um, you know, that's good, that's impressive. Uh, we were told that they're mainly analytical because they don't have the Unistore yet. A uh, little quiet whispers behind the scenes uh, mentions that you know container services could run Spark or could run SQL capacity, you know, Actually, OLTP. They, yes. they don't want to run Spark because they're saying right. Snowpark sure. is two to four times faster than is, Spark. Is Spark, right, right, but right. you know what they're saying is container yeah. services is very open to run many things. Could right, be right, even right. A relational or database. Like, yeah. Right. Right, and they've, right. they've eliminated the delta between performance between sort of iceberg uh, yes. uh, open and iceberg on Snowflake. Correct. I remember last year I asked Benoit, but yeah, isn't there a delta? And he looked at me funny because he's so far ahead probably into yeah. the roadmap, like, no, no. 
you don't get it. You know, he didn't say that, but he kind of looked at me that yeah. way. How I think they were saying 10% last year, a 10% yes, right. penalty. There possibly. was a penalty, and now there's yeah. ostensibly no penalty, so you can actually right. update right in, in place on right. the iceberg table. And you, I'm not sure if this came out in, in the keynote. It's actually bi-directional now. So you can create a, a managed iceberg table, but you can also uh, go to Iceberg and access a Snowflake table, right? Yes. So it's yeah. a bi-directional. Yes, exactly, thing. and you so, can both read yeah. and write, and it's so far, in terms of the open table formats, there are very few vendors that basically do it both ways. So they're stretching the Snowflake, sorry to use these terms, but fabric or mesh to, platform. Different, to yeah. different data types. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That Correct. seems like a yeah. very viable and bold strategy, but uh, should we be concerned about these announcements and free, pre, private preview, and then a year later, we're still not in GA, or is well, that? I like the native apps. I like the native apps, because basically that's gone to public preview. Yeah. So I mean, there, there's some real, there's, there's some real, you know, uh, pro your progress there. Some of the other stuff, like, I mean, Unistore, I think that's going to be a long and winding road. At, at the Analyst Summit and today, they were very good about following up on last year's announcements. Uh, at some events, you don't see that. We were at MongoDB last week, and they introduced a bunch of analytical capabilities last year, and we didn't see them talked about very much. They were very good about following up, they brought up yes. Unistore, they brought up uh, the native apps. We are seeing progress. Um, you know, there are things they're announcing here that customers want in a big way. Lots of cost controls and optimizations. Yeah. And if I were a customer, I'd be, you know, asking them to put on the coals to bring these to the fore. And in the FinOps environment we're in today with big interest in cloud optimization, um, you know, they should have more of these capabilities. I'm surprised, you know, there's one of their customers, Capital One, has this slingshot app. Right. <laughs> That's something uh, Snowflake should have. Well, their, their yeah. timing of that was pretty good. They announced it last year, and now everybody's so focused on optimization. But yeah, but, but it's really interesting about slingshot, you know, whatever slingshot is doing in the app, uh, the Snowflake is doing it in the database. Right. You can create a budget, you can create threshold, yeah. you can monitor, you can alert, you know. So the question that begs is like, what is the reason of having a third party product if it's natively available? Yeah. yeah. Well, they have a lot coming, but it's in private preview. The yeah. Snowflake right. capabilities it are in today. private for, yeah, most, yeah. for the most part. But Slingshot had a massive boot last year and then yeah. we didn't really hear very much yeah. about it. Well, the other thing, the other you know, the place where that battle may eventually be fought would be in ML Ops. And you know, Snowflake has to do a very careful sort of, you know, I guess they have just some very fancy footwork with their partners like Dataku and, and SAS and, and all those wonderful, you know, and Data Robot and all those wonderful stuff. In terms of that, they all do ML ops. So like, where does one pick up and the other leave off? What about ETL? What happens? I mean, they're kind of going to dance around that because you've got ETL vendors in the ecosystem and they're basically saying, yeah, you don't have to move the data anymore. So, yeah. so you have them using uh, uh, native apps frameworks, for example. Yeah. Matillion has a bunch of connectors yeah. and things that yeah. they're building in that framework. So uh, I think they're reaching a partners there. Um, they also introduced their, their advancement on streaming, Snow, Snow Park streaming. Okay. Uh, ah, right. And uh, Delta Tables. Other so these right. are things, uh, their own building blocks for uh, faster integration dynamic, of data. Dynamic, yes. tables. Dyna dynamic, dynamic tables. tables. Yes. Delta Tables is tomorrow. Yes, Sorry. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> dynamic tables. I, would actually, I took a... I yeah. was going to say, I missed yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh my God, Delta, wow. <laughs> We're not okay. going there. Okay, so uh, coming in to the show versus you guys are on a plane this afternoon going to San Francisco. Has your impression Changed at all, notwithstanding a lot of the stuff's not shipping. Yeah. Has your impression changed? Positive, more positive, more negative, neutral? I am positive. I, I think Snowflake is really thinking wide and beyond just the data. They're thinking data applications and everything around it. So I'm very gung ho. Yeah, very impressed. Um, yeah. You know, I think the container services are very promising. Hopefully, we'll see the follow up next year where it's Getting to public or is in public and GA is palpable. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Unistore and some other things that they developed last year, still waiting. So I'd like to see, make sure this progress from stage to stage is happening quickly. Yeah, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, it's, again, it's container services, container services, container services. And the reason for that is it really addressed a key, I guess, sort of shortcoming, you know, in the whole snow park environment, which is that it really, you know, basically, it was snow park last year, you know, up until now, it's like you had to go through UDFs or stored procedures. And that clearly does not appeal to the crowd that they want to reach out to. And, and I heard that, you know, on the floor when I was here last year, I think container services 
you know, just hits that right on the nose. Yeah, the North Star is they want to be the app store for right. enterprise and data apps. And you, the iPhone and, analogy. And, and you got to simplify yeah, and that. And Snow, Snow Park is great, uh, sorry, uh, container services right. all, for all the reasons you said, but it's more than, uh, it's like even machine learning, to train a model, it was really hard to do it in, in Snow, uh, Snowflake no. last year. Now they're model registry. Yeah. So they're introducing the, the whole MLOps capability natively. And so. it's also a potentially strong partner play. Yeah, yeah, right, absolutely. All right, Data Gang, we got to go. Uh, I'd awesome. love to have you guys back. Awesome, Thank you. as usual. Okay, good have to a see good you trip, again. safe travels. Thank you. Uh, definitely look for John Furrier out there. And, yeah, he's uh, going to be in San Francisco. Say, he is at the Intercontinental and also inside of Moscone. Well, so double, double pop-ups, so check it out. Okay. All right, and, I, I take care. and you too, okay. check it out on cube.net. We'll be right back right after this short break from Snowflake Summit from Caesar Forum in Las Vegas.